safety and uh, safeguarding partnership. So I'd really like to welcome you to today's session, which focuses on safeguarding in everyday life. And I think when we thought about the title of the session, we considered a number of different directions that we could explore. But then we thought that safeguarding in everyday life really fundamentally meant that it was the actions that could be taken in our communities and by our communities to promote kind of health and well-being and provide protection as needed using a person-centred approach. So I'm really, really pleased today that we've got four speakers to share information on this area with you. Firstly, we've got Dave Dixon and Kate Morton to share some of the work that's been taking place through the Community Wellbeing Hub, followed by Becky Penny to speak about uh, Live Well Beings, and then Nikki Rice from Avon Fire and Rescue. So it's very brief introduction to me because we have got a lot of people to share information. So I am going to stop talking and pass you across to our colleagues, Dave and Kate. Um, do you want, I know you've got a, a video, but I will let you introduce yourselves first and then let us know when you'd like us to share that information. Lovely, thank you. Okay, fine, thank you. Kate, do you want to go first? Thanks, um, Jen. Thanks, everybody. Um, a morning. I think it's just about morning. No, it's afternoon now. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Kate Morton. Um, my day job is I'm the chief executive of Bath Mind, which is a local mental health charity. But I'm also the chair of our infrastructure organisation, 3SG in Baines, um, and they give the voice to the third sector. And that's my involvement with Community Wellbeing Hub. Uh, and my name is Dave Dixon. I am the Community Engagement Manager for Bath and North East Somerset Council, normally based at the Guild Hall, but for the last two and a half, nearly three years, I've been based with my team at the Community Wellbeing Hub, which is up at Pease Down St John, right in the centre of our district, and we have been dealing with a whole host of different issues, as we will explain in a minute. We've got a little five minute video, and then we've literally got a tiny little PowerPoint presentation of five slides, and so um, it should be all done and dusted within about 15, 15 minutes, I think we've got. So, I mean, if you'd like to show the video first, which is a little five minute sort of resume of, of, of what we've been doing in the hub, that would be brilliant. Thank you. If other people got sound because no i haven't got any sound, no sound. yeah there should safe. be sound from the start yeah safe are you able to reshare sorry thank you yeah no problem we, we knew there would be some technical issue there always is isn't there thank you Can you hear that? No. And um, when you click share, you need to um, at the top where it says share content, you need to flick the switch that says include computer sound. Can you hear it now? Yes, all good. Great. <laughs> recognised very quickly that some of the people that we were dealing with had a whole variety of different needs that weren't actually being addressed. We gradually, as we went through 2020, suddenly realised that once we got hold of these people, we knew we had all these services that were available for them. And what we needed to do was to be flexible and agile to wrap the services around them, as opposed to asking them to wrap themselves around the services, often going to different locations, speaking to different people, saying the same thing over and over again. I was seeing that we had a huge problem with hospital flow last year. Um, when we hit the winter months, there was a real struggle um, with getting people out of hospital. It started to become obvious that sometimes one of the barriers was getting people out of hospital to a home with some food in. Well, one of the nurses just literally brought the pack to me on the ward. I'd been in there about three days. I was in hospital, the RUH, for eight days, as it turned out. The stuff in there, like the, the milk and the coffee and the tea and that in particular, it meant I didn't have to worry about going out too soon. 
and all even receiving visitors because it did it did affect me a fair bit mentally in terms of as I gradually built up some degree of confidence in terms of acceptance and, and, and carrying on. It gives us a bit of breathing space really so that other services can get in there and do what they need to do to support that person to stay well in their own home. Home is best for recovery um, and to avoid them going back into hospital. Using the, the sort of MDT meetings, which when we started were, were daily, we could actually have conversations about people and work out how how we dealt with them and actually what was the most important thing to start with. The, the main carer, uh, Sarah, has um, fibromyalgia and ME. How does go on? Carer, uh, Sarah has um, fibromyalgia and ME. Cases are often referred to us when a person is at a particular crisis in their life. And this couple had reached a tipping point and the care coordinator at the surgery felt that they needed input from external organisations. With the overload of caring duties, the wife was in a real crisis point herself. In some weeks, she doesn't feel able to talk to me. Um, so we would engage in text messages. So with Bath Mind on board, we could then start to look at the financial situation. They were heading for um, the possibility that they could lose their house because um, the husband was the breadwinner. The wife who is unable to work and actually needs to care for her husband. So all they could see was the edge of a cliff looming. And it became very clear that if we didn't get some practical help into that house quickly, we were absolutely in terror breakdown territory. We took the initial referral under Sarah's name as a home response um, for six weeks. And then that flowed directly into a home from hospital referral for her husband. He started having seizures and quite dramatic falls at the house and the paramedics had to take him into hospital for a checkup. The discharge team were aware that there were agencies visiting each day and that, that made his hospital stay shorter. On the occasions when she did feel able to, to, to talk and, and um, offload, um, she was really very articulate, um, uh, but, you know, was really struggling with the, the unknown um, uh, factor. Um, you know, was he seriously ill? Was he not seriously ill? Would he ever go back to work? Would he not? Weekly, we were reporting back at the Community Wellbeing Club MDT about everybody's progress with this couple. And we found that really beneficial. And um, it was clear that lots of different agencies were involved. And at that meeting, we were able to find out who's visiting on which day, which meant we could slot in on the days when other agencies weren't going in. So the first contact allowed us to put the brakes on and then the ongoing contact has allowed us to get them back into a situation where they are financially stable, their house is safe and they can afford to keep warm because for, for the husband with MS that is incredibly important. And that to me is actually what person-centred planning is all about. It makes sure that the individual who requires the support of, of human services is right at the centre of, of those discussions. And from this family's point of view, they have actually said that the quick action and the support of the, these multi-agencies has absolutely transformed their lives. I think the ethos is that we are working together collaboratively to absolutely put the person at the centre of everything that, 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 that we're about. That's the uh, that's the little five minute video that um, we uh, we put together. Um, there was other clips that were being filmed, but it was there was too much to put into one video. So we've got enough um, material information probably for two or three. So we're going to tinker around with that a little bit. But if we could have the presentation up, like I said, it's only five slides and um, Kate and I will be um, sharing it between us. I'll do the um, 
introduction and the slide two, and then Kate will do slide three. So delivering integrated community services across Bath and North East Somerset, which is kind of what we're trying to um, look at and what we're trying to achieve at the moment in collaboration with all our different partners. So if I can go to the next slide, which is the sort of meat of the, the community wellbeing hub journey. In a sense, the hub was very unusual in that it was a public sector, private sector and community and voluntary sector organisations all thrown together in March 2020 and given an almost impossible task. Um, and the only way that we were able to do it was by being bold and imaginative. And it very quickly dawned on us that we were going to have to support ourselves and each other to deliver as much as we possibly could in collaboration with as many other people as we possibly could. So the hub was set up at breakneck speed. We recruited 2,000 3SG volunteers across the whole of Bath, North East Somerset, which were vital on a grassroots level. We knew we had to push as much as we possibly could down to the grassroots and then just have the complex stuff that would come to us that would need to be unpicked, but stuff that could be dealt with by a local neighbour, a local volunteer, that is um, CEV is uh, clinically extremely vulnerable. So the government announced that we had over 8,000 uh, clinically extremely vulnerable people in Bath and North East Somerset who were told to shield for 12 weeks. Uh, and we were, to start with, we were, the, we were going to be having to supply them with food, but obviously that changed very quickly and the government stepped in and they carried to do it. So we did an awful lot of different referrals. We had um, a big emergency food parcel um, program that we did, and we delivered 35,000 two course meals over 18 months, which is over 100,000 different containers to people who were vulnerable and who were desperately in need for food. Food was the anchor. Food was the anchor that got them into the hub. And once we got them in through the food, we suddenly realised there were other things that needed to be done. And we tried to obviously wrap ourselves around their particular needs as services. So as we go through the programme, because I'm conscious of time, so I'm going to rattle through this quite quickly. Um, obviously, the vaccination programme came up again. We had the race course. We had some of the doctor surgeries running vaccination programmes. 200 plus employee volunteers registered for the pavilion in Bath. Hundreds of volunteers from 3SG that went through that whole vaccination programme in the winter of 2020, 2021. And then obviously the help packs came in and you saw in the video uh, the help packs and actually one of the recipients of them. So we've done 210 of those uh, packs so far distributed from the Royal United Hospital and those are continuing. I took another 12 packs up to the hospital just last week. The Homes for Ukraine thing again that came through. We're doing that's being run from the hub with the welfare visits. We've done 154 and onward referrals for again for some of our Ukrainian guests who've got some of the exactly the same kind of issues that we were seeing in the summer of 2020. We've secured some additional money for Home is Best Transformation Program, which is basically trying to get us to coordinate approaches to um, access to community services. And we're also now involved, obviously, with the um, cost of living and online. But what holds it all together is the Rivium, um, which is our software program, which allows all the individual organisations and partners to be able to share sensitive and confidential information with each other securely. Um, and to be able to, like I said, unpick some of the issues that some of our people have got when they present themselves. Sorry, next slide, which is Kate, I think. Thanks, Dave. Thanks. And um, so I, I think a lot of this was covered actually in the video, but I'll just be as brief as I can. I think it's really important to say that this has very much been a holistic approach, as, as Tim and others had said, and it's about wrapping the services around the individual. Um, and it is for us has been about a shared ethos so our trusted relationship development has been really, really key to this and key to that delivery model. And as Dave, Dave has mentioned, it's that hub and spoke model, but it's not actually about a building. It is about a culture and an ethos that we work together collaboratively. And the MDTs have been a fantastic um, enabler uh, for that and, and, and a way of us showing that we can really work together. And as Dave said, really, really a speed. So we've been very agile and we've been incredibly creative. So, so the hub and spoke model um, is about developing what this looks like going forward. So our hub at the moment, although as I say, not about a building, but we are a, a piece down St John as, as, a, as a community wellbeing hub. But we want to open up our services across Bath and North East Somerset to be far more accessible. Uh, and be far more open and be able to welcome people in. So we want to go out to people. So we create an outreach approach. So as Dave says, we've got the RUH we're developing, which is going to be fantastic. That should be starting in the new year. And I really want us to see us going to other uh, more outreach 
NES areas, so North East Somerset areas, so the Chew Valley, Cainshire, Midsummer Norton. So we really, really can get into the heart of our area. That's something that is really, really critical. We want to develop and build on our assets um, and look at not reinventing the wheel if you like we don't want to duplicate we actually want to kind of map services more effectively so that we can um, fill in those gaps and build on that kind of ethos about personalized care and, and person-centered planning and, and creating the connections across all of our networks it's not just the people in the hub it's how can we go wider to those individuals and those organizations who are smaller community groups you can see the names just about quite small of the people currently involved in the hub but we want that to be wider there are so many organizations community groups doing amazing things we want to widen that and we want to use our intelligence and knowledge um, of data collection and collation, how we can use that to be really, really effective and be really, really timely with the support that we're developing as well. Um, and I think there's there's also the MDTs that we really want to develop and, and take that further. And as Dave said, Rivium has been our enabler. So it is a it is a, an online referral platform, but it's that kind of that 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 digital piece that's been really, really critical for us to be able to allow everybody to share the information from people and have that those data sharing agreements, which has been really, really critical. What I have found that's been really, really interesting as well, I'm not new to people, but it but it's been really starkly made aware is that when people have made calls to the front door, um, there is no wrong front door, but the, 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 the front door that exists in the, in the hub in terms of our um, uh, uh, our, our lines uh, and people who are who are supporting the lines, the phone lines, is that um, they will ring with one one issue, one concern, and you'll find that there are many many other concerns coming through. And what that has allowed us to do as a multi agency response is being really agile and creative and being able to, uh, in that timely way, pick up on those various issues and respond to them because we know that social determinants doesn't work with one issue it is going to be many many issues and it means we can really get to the heart of what the concern has been and then we can really um, create a pack and a package of support and resolution and i think that was evidenced really well in the video as well back over to dave i think yeah next slide is mine thanks I think. um this is the uh, this is just a sort of diagrammatical um, thing about the um, uh, that, that we referred to in the video about the um, the couple um, and the way that we that, that we dealt around around it with that person centred approach. And again, it came from grassroots level. It came from what we we run a, a scheme called Village Agents down in Chew Valley. And this couple were uh, alerted to us by the village agents who were there who were dealing with them on, uh, from a grassroots perspective. But there were too many things that they were able they were unable to do. But they knew that if they put them into the community wellbeing hub and it went through the system. System, then actually the CAB, Bath Mind, uh, Alcuro, Age UK, all those other organisations could also slot into some of the issues that these people were bringing. And again, with our Rivium system, what we're literally about to launch is what we call an online referral form for uh, trusted organisations, because we know that people are coming to some of our partner organisations for one particular issue, but they've got a host of other issues which are not addressed, and the referral form will allow those organisations to be able to slot people into the system, that idea about there being no wrong door, which basically was a very fundamental principle of ours right from the very start. Um, and then the final slide, I think, Kate, is yours, isn't it? Yeah, thanks, Dave. Um, just really very briefly, um, those are the details, the phone number and our online referral uh, uh, form and the website. Um, but I'm very happy for people to contact myself, I'm sure Dave as well, if you want to share more information, um, if you want to talk through the, the the hub details, or if you want to come see the hub, I think that'd be great. We'd love to have you kind of have a cup of tea and we can kind of discuss all the issues. Um, and obviously we've had some um, challenges along the way, but I think overall it's been quite an amazing achievement. And so I'd, I'd love to share that with people. Uh, and how we're going to develop this beyond 2023, 24 um, would be great. That's love that clap. Thank you. <laughs> um, uh, those are the details. Uh, a big thank you to everybody for listening. And I think I'm handing you over to Becky Penny now. Is that correct? Lovely. Thanks very much. Hi everyone. Um, so thank you, Dave and Kate. That was brilliant. Um, 
I'm here just to give you a bit of an overview about Live Well Baines um, now. So Live Well Bath and North East Somerset. Uh, before I share my screen with you, I just wanted to give you a little bit of background about it. Um, so Live Well Baines provides a single web-based resource, lots of information, signposting and resources for three specific target audiences. Um, parents and carers of young people aged up to 25 with special educational needs and disabilities, um, children and families, and adults needing care or support to live independently. Um, so just a bit of background, the resource launched last August replaces three separate sites and it's managed in-house at the council. Um, so essentially Live Well Baines is a useful tool for organisations, services and support workers and groups who work with support and provide services to um, the specific groups I just mentioned. Uh, its aim is to provide choice and help prevent people needing more complex intervention or support. Um, we signpost all services, groups, activities, resources and support available across Bath and North East Somerset, um, as well as to council commissioned provider services. Uh, many of the services we signpost to are free or low cost. Um, so more of a focus for, for this presentation is the adult section. So just a bit of background, the local authority has a legal duty to provide information and signposting for to families, to provide it for send local offer for families of children and young people with additional needs, but also for adult care and support under the Care Act 2014. Um, it requires us to signpost adults needing care and support to the information and advice they need. Um, these needs could be mental ill health, physical learning disabilities, old age, sensory impairments, long term health conditions or those who are socially isolated. Um, so I'm going to share my screen with you to give you a mini tour of Live Well Baines now. Um, so I'm hoping you can all see the screen. Um, so this is the landing screen for Live Well Baines. We're going to navigate straight to the adult section. Because that's what, why we're primarily here today. Um, just wait for that one. So within this page, we have um, the whole host of everything related to adults. So um, we're able to navigate to different support sections depending on the need of the individual. Um, so covering all sorts of aspects, keeping adults safe. So within this section is where we'll find our safeguarding information and sign boasting to the safeguarding services within Bath and North East Somerset and our neighbouring local authorities as well. Um, within each section, we've tried to make the information as digestible as possible. So we've broken it up into very um, separate and succinct uh, categories. So within each section, we have subsections that break it up even more just to make it easier to digest, easier, easier for people to navigate through and find the information that they're really looking for. Um, so within each individual section, if I go down one more layer, we have a list of individual services that have um, registered on Live Well Bath and North East Somerset. So each organization of service is responsible for maintaining their own information we find that's the easiest way to make sure it's up to date um, for the end user to find the most current information contact details um, and the information about the, the, what the service provides so each one is listed independently here this is the good example of the choice that live well baines offers so we signpost to all relevant services so people can navigate um, and find the service that best suits their need um, here we also have a very popular favorites function so within these lists you can add, add any of these to your favorites as a perhaps a support person um, or a professional working with an individual you can add them to your favorites it enables you to pull off a list um that you can then share with the individual you're supporting so you can add as many of those as you like you could then print off that list and hand it to an individual if they were needing the signposting um to support services to enable them to then go away and peruse the information and and decide what is best to meet their needs they have the contact details they can get in touch with them um themselves to find out uh how to best serve their serve their needs um, we have an easy to find register function here. So again, any services organisations that support individuals um, living in Bath and Office Somerset or beyond if there are specialist services can take five minutes to register here. Um, 
it's a very simple form to fill out, comes through to us in the Live Well Baines team, and we'll make sure that that information is then um, sent through to all of the relevant sections of one Live Well Baines. Um, we cross-reference a lot of our information, what we find uh, very much like the Community Wellbeing Hub. People don't necessarily phone up about one, one specific topic, it often leads to more complex needs. So we've, we've worked with teams and professionals to make sure that the most common inquiries are cross-referenced and we're linking people in one place to those various different agencies so they haven't got to start their search all over again each time they're looking for a, to meet a different need. Um, what we also have is if someone is, knows exactly what they're looking for, um, we have our search bar here. Um, so if they just search for a specific term, um, they can search and they will specifically find those informations and um, those services that will come up here. Um, it's again, it's just another way of navigating the site so that it's not too overwhelming for everybody, um, serving different people's uh, needs and things like that. Um, we have a very straightforward contact us function. So we're regularly receiving feedback from users. Um, we especially like to know if, if somebody isn't able to find the information they're looking for. We'd like to know that so that we can make sure that the information is accessible as possible for them. Um, we find out if there's any gaps in information. So again, it, families, individuals get in touch with us and say they're struggling to find information on a particular topic. We might realise there's a bit of a gap um, on Live Well Baines and we can develop the relevant information pages and, and make sure that the services are on there. Um, so it helps us to know what people are looking for so we can make sure it's all accurate um, and useful for them. I will mention our social media. So down at the bottom of the, the web page, you can find links to our Facebook um, and our, our Instagram page. So that is primarily more for younger people. But our Facebook um, is where we sort of share information about activities and events. Um, any new services, any drop-in groups that are happening in the area, so people can can find out about those as well. And they they work in collaboration with our um, leisure, social leisure and community sections as well, which are, you'll find on each of the different sections um, relating to the different uh, groups of people. Um, we also have an unsure where to start tool. So um, we've created our own self-assessment tool for people to who know they need a, an area of they, they need have an area of support that they're looking for. Not quite sure where to start. Aren't confident in navigating the site. Um, we've created this tool so that we can signpost them, help them navigate through, so they can click through any of these um, relevant sections that are an area of need for them. They can answer some very simple questions um, here. I'll just do this as an example. Um, and then they will be signposted to the relevant sections on Live Well Baines. Um, we find that people really like that as a really good starting point to find their way around. And then from then they can identify all the different services they're able to access. Um, the other good thing about this feature as well, um, if we click the continue button, uh, we have the function to email those results to an individual. So um, if, it, if it was me that was looking for that spot, I can email them to myself. So I have them for future reference. Perhaps you're a support worker working with someone, you can email it either to yourself or you can email it off to that individual. Similarly, um, with the adults, if they'd like to talk to someone, they can click that button and they'll be signposted towards the first response team um, to offer them support. And we've got the information about our neighbouring local authorities here as well. So it's a really good tool, people finding it very, very useful um, as a starting point to try and navigate to where they need to be. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention is we've recently created these cost of living support pages. So um, within here, we've brought together a, a lot of information that can try and help people. Um, and we've been led by the services that are out there working with people, supporting people, the common themes of the information they're looking for. So within our cost of living support pages, um, we've separated the information into categories again to make it just easier to digest. Um, and within each section, we're signposting to specific um, services that might be available to areas within the Live Well Baines website, um, signposting to services like the Welfare Support Scheme. Um, we've got information about um, the Energy at Home Scheme, uh, where people can go, things they can do, top tips, things like that, um, signposting out to services, uh, all, all a range of different topics that people might be, uh, areas they might be looking for support in. Um, so you've got all the information on there. Within the cost and cost of living section as well is where you will find 
Bath and North East Somerset's Warm Spaces Directory. So again, all comes part and parcel of um, safeguarding adults and helping them to remain safe in the community. So the Bath and North East Somerset's Warm Spaces Directory can be found here. Um, we've got 39 spaces listed at the moment, which is really great and more coming through each day. Um, so within each listing, we've got the details of what they offer, where they can be found, um, any costs that might be involved and, and how people can get in touch with them. Um, so that's really great that we've got that that there. Um, and the last thing I wanted to point out was about the safeguarding information that we have here. So within the Keeping Adults Safe section, um, we're able to find um, the information that where what people can do if they suspect that um, an adult is being abused or neglected. And so again, signposting them to those um, very specific services, uh, what they can do to help, um, what things to look out for. And um, I can put a link in the chat as well to um, the other local authorities that are, that are around their, their, their equivalent site as well. Each local authority will have a site that um, is equivalent to Live Well Baines. It won't necessarily be in one place um, every each local does that does a separate thing, but they will have an equivalent to the adult section on Live Well Bath and North East Somerset. I'll put the link to the website in the chat. Um, I will put the links to the uh, neighbouring local authorities as well and our contact email address should have, anyone have any questions. But you can also reach us via the contact us function. Um, it's very much a whistle stop tour, but any questions I think are available at the end of the session. I'll be around. Um, for now, though, I'm going to leave you and I'm going to pass you over to Nikki, I believe. Am I right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I'm going to stop sharing. OK, hi, everybody. Um, so my name is Nikki Rice. I'm from Aiden Fine Rescue Service. Um, so I have got a little presentation to share with you, so I'll just get that ready. Can you all see my screen? I'm going to take that as yes. Um, so my name is Nick Rice. I work for Avon Farm Rescue Service. I'm the Vulnerable Adults Manager and Joint Safeguard in Need. Um, so I've been asked today just to talk about what services we provide um, and some of the experiences we have. So talking about safeguarding everyday life. Um, as a fire and rescue service, many people just assume that we go out and do um, fire related calls, but actually we're quite a lot bigger than that. So some information for you that in 2021, we handled over 20,000 emergency calls. We responded to over 15,000 incidents and over 500 fires in the home. We also conducted over 3,870 home fire safety visits. Um, so what we're seeing is our interactions with the public are really varied. They are at points of the most, you know, frightening time in their lives, potentially, if we're responding to a fire call. You know, they're not anticipating that they're going to have visitors and then all of a sudden they need us to come round. Um, we're also going around conducting home fire safety visits where people are allowing us into their homes to support them in how to give fire safety advice. And I think what's key for us is that we are seeing so many different changes in when we're going out to people's homes. So we're seeing a lot more self neglect. There's a lot more poor mobility, cognitive impairment. So we're working with people who are in the early signs of dementia or in the later stages. We are going to more mental health concerns or more mental health crises, drugs and alcohol misuse. And so what we're seeing is that while sometimes these don't meet safeguarding thresholds, we are seeing those kind of early stages where we'd like to do more to onward refer and assist people in how they can get help and support. And we do that through a number of different ways, including working with a lot of our partner agencies. So it's worth mentioning that in 2021-22 year, we had three fire fatalities. Um, at least two of those were not known to us but potentially have fire safety concerns that potentially we could have gone and done a visit in advance. It's not to say it would have changed any outcomes, but obviously where there's a fire fatality, we review all of our information to see whether there's anything more we could have done as a fire service. And for me, it's about ensuring that our partner agencies do know that we're there to support in a number of different ways. 
So a lot of the things we're seeing at the moment around hoarding, threat of arson, they're all things that can be referred to us as a fire service that we will try and help with. So it's really worth kind of knowing that we are there as one of those services. So in terms of our key interventions, we have our home fire safety visits, we have our partner engagements and we also have adult interventions. So I'm going to talk a little bit about all of those. So last year we went to 3,871 visits. Um, a home fire safety visit is a 45, roughly 45 minute free visit for the homeowner. They need to consent. Um, we would go in, it's non-judgmental. We go in, we talk about fire safety concerns. And this is predominantly things around the home. So it's things around cooking safety, fire safety, candle safety, you know, electrical practices, um, things like that. Um, we also look then to test people's smoke alarms, um, put any more in if they require it. So that'll be things around um, maybe heat alarms, CO alarms. So that's all free equipment that we can offer. In some cases, we are able to add additional equipment. So, for example, um, if we have threat of arson, we may look at fire retardant spray that we can use. Or if you have somebody who potentially is in a chair for a lot of the time smoking, then we can also put the fire retardant spray in there. We have fire retardant bedding as well. So we've got quite a lot of things that we can use to support people within their homes. Um, this year, we're looking to achieve 5,000 visits. I'm about 11% short of our target at the moment, and I think that's probably going to continue. Um, what we did see is a considerable drop in referrals through COVID, which is understandable because obviously people don't want us in their homes. Um, but obviously now we're trying to build that back up again. Pre-pandemic, we were looking at about 7,500 per year. So we did take a really big hit. And obviously fire safety in the home for some individuals hasn't changed and potentially it has got worse. So for us, it is about making sure our partner agencies know we're there, know what we can offer and know how we can support them. Things that we can do are around doing joint visits with partner agencies. So we've done many visits with support workers. Um, so they also hear the fire safety messaging. We do have a person centred approach and we are, are working under the principles of making each contact count. So when we go on a visit, we're also looking what else we can do. So are there agencies that we can refer to for the person to get them support? You know, is there slips, trips and falls dangers? You know, is there thing, other things that we can do to help them? Um, with the service, um, it's been the same for quite a while. So we're looking at trying to improve things. Um, we recognise our onward referral mechanism could be better. Um, so that's one of the things that we're looking to put in place over the next couple of years. Um, we also know that providing agency feedback has, hasn't happened. So what we're looking at is how, if an agency refers somebody, how do we go back to that agency to let them know whether that visit was completed, whether we were unable to contact somebody, so that if we know there's somebody with a fire safety concern, the agencies are definitely working together better. And we're also constantly review, reviewing all our, our equipment to make sure we've got the latest stuff, make sure if anything new is coming out, exploring things that we might be able to utilise. So um, we looked at um, gas caps and whether they could be something we could provide. So we are always looking at different things and how we can provide a better service. With our partner engagement, um, so obviously one of the main reasons that I need partner referrals is because I, we recognise that our partners also see the most vulnerable within the community. So housing officers, social workers, you're going to be going into people's homes and you're going to be seeing potentially them living unsafe in terms of fire safety practices. So you can identify those to us. Um, to enable that, we offer free practitioner training once a month. It's online, it's an hour. Um, obviously, I'm going to say I definitely recommend it. Um, but this will go through things around how to identify fire safety risks, how to refer to us and where you can get extra support. We are really approachable as a team. And if you want any kind of advice or guidance, if it's a question, hypothetical, you can always contact us and we're happy to help out wherever we can. Um, I think sometimes it's easier to talk things through um, rather than put it in email. So we're more than happy to have those communications with you. And we're also working with our partners on events. So we have um, a number of 
partners who refer to us for our home fire safety visits. So it's about 170 at the moment. And what we've been doing with some of those is putting on bespoke events for their clients. So, for example, we held one in Patchway um, where we had fire safety, our business fire safety team came, our children and young persons team came, and we were able to get some partner agencies from the council and Sari to attend as well. So we put on a bit of an event at a local fire station, you know, something for everybody to try and get those fire safety messages across and then work collaboratively to see if there's other things that we can get across as well. I'm very keen to run additional events and work with other agencies um, however we can, open to most ideas. So if you want to work with us, please do get in contact. Um, we do work obviously with vulnerable people within the community. Um, but obviously some of this is about sharing our fire safety message with all of the community as well. So have a chat, see what we can do. Um, I'm also a part of the Community Safety and Safeguarding Partnership. Um, so I cover Baines and Bristol and my um, co-person covers South Gloss and North Somerset. Um, to book the practitioner training, um, it, there's a link on our website um, and it's just on Eventbrite. Um, we've just released 2023 dates, so you can go ahead and book that. Um, so in terms of our adult interventions, we also offer um, fire safety talks with groups. So um, my team go out, they will go to things like dementia caths, they've been to after stroke groups, they'll go to um, mother and baby groups. So they'll go out to different groups, different community groups if we get an invite, and they'll give fire safety messaging around how to keep safe in the home. Um, our aim is to do as many of these as possible. Um, obviously, we've only started doing them probably in the last six months due to COVID. Um, but we're really hoping to get back into that. And again, if you'd like to do that, you can request it through the website or you can just email us direct. Either way is absolutely fine. Um, so I've spoken already about community events. We're also looking to try and arrange more community events in our fire station. So things around open days, really making sure like if we run a, a community car wash that we're utilising it to make sure our safety messaging goes out as well. <clears throat> And we've also done some bespoke interventions, so where we've had um, some individuals in the community who potentially display fire setting behaviours who are adults, we will go and talk to them, go and explain to them the risk of what they're doing. Um, we will go out and talk to other groups um, and it's very bespoke. We can tailor what we do and we are more than happy to do that as well. Um, so I feel like I've gone through very quickly all the things I wanted to say so that hopefully will leave us a lot of time for questions. Um, so that's my email address and my phone number. Um, most information is available on our website and obviously it does include services around our children and young persons services as well. So they also conduct educational visits and also fire setter visits. So you can find that out on our uh, web pages. Um, the community safety team email address that can be for referrals or general inquiries that is monitored every day. So it's a really good way of getting many messages through. And if you do have any partner queries, Rachel Lowers is our partnerships person. Um, and if you're wanting to either reinvigorate your partnership or if you're not in a partnership with us for referring home fire safety visits, you can contact her um, and have that conversation. So I think, Jen, that is me done. Smashing. Thank you all very much. As we kind of said at the beginning of today's session, really, uh, safeguarding in everyday life is, is a huge area. So we've tried to kind of dip into different parts um, where work has been undertaken um, across services. But if people do have any questions, please do ask. I noticed in the um, chat there's already one um, for Nick, if that's OK. Just thinking about how the kind of um, the fire service are able to support people when there are issues of um, potential self-neglect or hoarding. Is there any possibility you could kind of give some thoughts on that? Yeah, so we would go and do, um, obviously, you have to have consent of the individual. So sometimes that can be quite challenging. So we would go and do a home fire safety visit. Now, sometimes that might be with the support worker and we can get consent on the doorstep um, and see if that works. Um, 
what we would be looking at is obviously encouraging them to have their exit and entries clear. We would look at additional smoke detection. Um, obviously, there is encouragement and we are looking to work more closely with there's a making spaces project under We Can Repair, I think it is in Bristol. And so we would try and signpost that. I think where we have trouble in reality is that if we have a severe hoarder, we would refer it for safeguarding. But if you've got somebody around kind of like the four or five mark um, in terms of the clutter image rating scale, it does then become really difficult to encourage them to engage with services. So I'm not sure I've got a magic wand, but obviously it's something that we should, would help out with. We could look at additional support. We have worked with housing officers before and kind of spoken about the fire loading and things like that and trying to ensure that, you know, if they are cooking and it's cluttered around the cooker, we try and do whatever measures we can and or if they're smoking in the home, try and give advice. But obviously the Home Fire Safety Service is a voluntary service. Um, in terms of the fact they have to consent for us going. So if they don't want us there, at the end of the day, it is advice. And so that's obviously all we can give. I'm not sure whether that helps or not. Uh, it definitely does. Thank you very much. I think one of the other questions that has come through was um, just in regards to the equivalent of Live Well Bain's um, site in other areas. And I think Becky has very kindly kind of popped links in for people um, for services in the different authorities because there are equivalents. And I suppose what we wanted to do was just really heighten awareness that of signposting those services out for people to, to support individuals making choices in the community um, to to get the support that would be beneficial to them. Just having a little look through to see if there are any other um, questions that have come up, sorry. Um, just comments about people having used the fire service um, home offer that, that you provide, Nick, and just how, how helpful that is really. Um, just also, I don't know, Sarah, if you can just confirm where the workshop will be saved, I think. That has been a question so, around um, that as well. Yeah, so each of the five days is being recorded um, and then they'll be uploaded onto the Keeping Bristol Safe Partnership website and each child, each adult's partnership across the region will send out the links to all of their partnership members for circulation. Um, so um, they, they're not ready, they're not going to be ready like this afternoon to get this link, but probably over the next week or two they'll be uploaded um, and there'll be a link um, probably on each partnership website that we can add. Um, so we'll put them on the websites and we'll also send out emails uh, through all of our usual routes for people. Um, if after a couple of weeks anybody can't find them and wants help about that, I'll put my email address in the chat and people can just drop me an email to say, where did they go? And, and I'll try and uh, point you in the right direction. I'll just pop the evaluation in the chat and then I'll put my email address. Brilliant. Thank you so much. Sorry, Nick, there's another question that's been directed your way just around. Um, you mentioned the clutter scale and whether you could find uh, share a little bit more information on that or where that can be found for people. Yeah, so it's the clutter image rating scale. It's a national tool. Um, we do have information on our website about it and what it does is it it demonstrates levels of cl clutter and hoarding from a level one, which would be pretty much none to a level nine where it's up to the ceiling and it's used I think what the aim is that professionals use it so that everybody's kind of talking about the same levels and we have the same kind of context so for example if you said to us or oh, we we're dealing with a level six hoarder we would then be able to know what that looks like to know whether there's any provisions that we might need to put in place so it's almost like um, a tool to allow everybody to talk the same language I suppose um, and it's in terms of whether it's in one room, whether it's in three rooms. So they tend to look at things around kitchen, living room and bedroom. Um, so we're hoping to use it in in um, conjunction with a home assessment as well. So that's something I'm hoping to bring out earlier uh, later on next year. Um, but I should be able to put the link in the chat for you, but it is really useful. So particularly for us, if you're telling us that you're working with somebody with um, hoarding or clutter, it just gives us an idea of how significant it is. So it's it's just a national tool. 
Brilliant, thank you. And I think somebody might have already popped that link in there. For I've us, just done so. it, so it's, oh, that should be there. Perfect. Thank you. I don't think there are any other questions that have come up at the moment, but like I say, we know we've covered a lot of information. And I think because our speakers were so um, concerned about making sure we covered information and not run over time that we have had a little bit of time left over. But if there is any kind of questions, queries that come up, please do pass them on because we obviously want to respond as, as much as we possibly can. But otherwise, if you're able to complete the evaluation that um, Sarah's popped into the chat, that would be greatly appreciated. And again, we'd just like to thank you all very much for your time today. It's much appreciated. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Thank you so much to um, all of those um, people from the uh, Bath and North East Somerset partnership for presenting that today. Um, and uh, you're free to go, everybody. Uh, once you have completed your evaluation, of course, we really value that. You're getting lots of thank yous.